What's going on? My name is Dan. I'm an amateur woodworker. This is my shop. And today I'm going to be showing you how I made this box for the Shaper Box Challenge. So Shaper Tools is sponsoring their Shaper Box Challenge on social media. And they're just asking you to make a box, really of any type. It can be up to you. So I went with this Oregon Walnut Slab that I had. It's at six quarters and I'm gonna have to rip that down to make it usable. I took it over to the bandsaw to rip it down to width of about six inches. And I ended up milling it down to half inch pieces that then I can take over to the jointer. And then I'll take it over to the planer. And if you're like me, most everything becomes a game at some point. So whenever you have offcuts from your table saw, you end up shooting hoops with those. Typically not successfully. And after proving why you're in the wood shop instead of on the hard court, you can count out how many pieces of wood you have. In this case, it's half inch black Oregon walnut. And I mark it out with a white chalk pencil to avoid any knots or other imperfections that you wanna to avoid to make sure that you have the right size pieces for that box. I like to use a white chalk pencil because it shows up really well and it's easy to identify when you go to cross cut it on the sled. So that pretty much wraps up the first phase of this. Just the rough milling. It takes time and obviously you want to make sure you have good stock. These taller ones I'm going to leave to the side for the lid. But then otherwise it's just a matter of choosing what's going to look best here. I kind of rough cut those in that last section of the video because then these are going to end up getting down to final dimension and I can kind of work to make sure it's exactly what I want. But at this point, we're looking really good. This is how you make a box, by the way. If you didn't know, you just stack it on there and then it's done. And that's it. I win. That's the contest. That's the whole contest. I just won. Thank you so much. So... You might be surprised, but for a box, I'm going to go with a square. And in this case, I wanna make sure it can hold the things that I want it to hold. So for instance, Shaper has a lot of double-sided tape and it won't fit vertically because there's just not enough space in here. So that'll have to be a horizontal and that'll start dictating some of the space. Now, the cool thing with having a Shaper already is that I can basically kind of figure this out as I go on the design. This is to say, I'm not entirely sure what the design's gonna be, and that's kind of what I enjoy doing, because otherwise, it just feels like you're putting together something from a big box store or something. So it's fun to figure it out as it goes. You should always smell it. it smells like walnut. All right, so I'm gonna cut these down, and each one's gonna be 13 inches long. That's what I'm gonna start with. Again, that'll dictate the size of the actual interior eventually. And then I'll put a little quarter inch rabbit inset on the bottom to fit these as the base. So I'll have to glue up a panel of these. And that way, um, you know, there won't be a ton of thickness. So it's not like these things are gonna be super inset, the tape and everything, but it should allow for the tape to sit in there and not move, not jostle around too much because I can still inset these, you know, a quarter of an inch or so once I make those shapes with the shaper.
All right, so I've just taken this off the origin and uh, I've made some just really basic box joints here that are going to connect our side panels to this box. And again, it's nothing fancy. I had designs to maybe do some kind of through tenons that would be triangles, but I just said, no, I don't really wanna do that. I thought it might be fun for just a little bit of a detail add to take this joint and add a little strength to it by using one of these brass Sorry about that. By using one of these brass rods. These are really popular right now with folks who are doing woodworking. Um, the brass mixed with the walnut ends up being a really pretty detail. So what I was thinking is using this, which is an eighth of an inch thick, and then mimicking the shaper tape here, which has these different dots within rectangles. So I'm just gonna use it as a way to further strengthen these joints by basically creating almost like little mimicked shaper origin tape on the different joints here, uh, which should be fun. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just kind of clean up these and then route out the grooves that are gonna accept the bottom, which I will need to glue up and put together here with the remaining uh, walnut planks. So I finished routing in the grooves and then the stopped dados here so that we don't get any reveal on the end grain because that's going to ruin our illusion of those domino um, pieces. And it's looking pretty good. I'm excited about it. All we have to do now is wait for the bottom and the top to dry and cut out the grooves on those so they'll match fit these. So that was probably the most nerve wracking part of this whole process. I routed in all the different shapes that I decided to design for this. You can see it here. I'm gonna just kind of put all this stuff in here so you can see everything fits in here nicely. Wrench. This little pry bar, this is awesome when you have that double sided tape. Um, I can't remember whose video I saw this in but I'll link to it. Then the calipers can fit here perfectly. The smaller shaper tool, the tape, all the bits will fit in these. Now I'll still have to sand this and clean it up and everything, but I'm excited. I think this is gonna be a really good addition. It's just gonna make it so much easier to grab everything and have everything. Next, I just need to uh, route in the groove so that it can be accepted in the bottom of this box. And then off camera, I planed this. So um, this is gonna be the top. Happy with that progress, really happy to have this done. This is really well done. For those of you curious, all of this was done on the shaper. I did it right on there. You can create all these basic shapes and then route those out 
Um, they do have a really nice um, maker space on their online presence that works really well um, that they just released. It's still in beta version, but this was just all done on there. So is it perfect? No, like this is has a little play to it, a little slop. Um, this has a little slop again over here, uh, but for what I need it for, this is great. It will work really well. All right, so I just finished making those grooves, tenons, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's see how it fits. So just pop that into there, pop this into there, and then I made markings. That's really helped with just kind of knowing which goes where. So I just labeled them A, B, C, D. It's all fitting really nicely. It's really good. And whoops, obviously it's not glued yet. But there we go. That's the box. So that's great. That worked out well. So I'm gonna, uh, before I glue it, I'll sand this off camera, just the bottom there. I don't think anybody wants to watch sanding. Maybe there is. But there's some people out there that just love sanding. They're just like, man. Hope there's more channels of people sand. So when you're gluing up walnut, definitely get some dark wood glue. There's no better way I've learned as an amateur woodworker to learn how to ruin a walnut project than by not using dark wood glue. So this is not sponsored, except it's sponsored by your future self. In about 30 years, I hope so. Who would be very frustrated when you don't use dark wood glue. bought yourself something lately in the woodworking world go ahead and buy yourself a million clamps you will use them even if you don't love your clamps and you feel like you should have better clamps buy yourself a million clamps off camera I sized up the top here so this will go right on here I'm gonna glue this and clamp it just to get it to dry because my plan is to cut off the top once it's on here. And then again, off camera, I just made these little inserts that will fit in there and then allow the top to just slide on there, hopefully nice and snugly. Just finished taking those clamps off and the glue has set up really nice this lid is well secured on here so I do need to now rip off these edges so I'm gonna take it over to the table saw and just clean those up shouldn't be too difficult
All right, so I just took it off the saw as you saw and hopefully it worked. That was my first time ever cutting a top from a box. I had used some shims to kind of hold it so that it wouldn't pinch because that can happen. I saw that in a nice tutorial video. Otherwise, I think it came out all right. So here <laughs> we can now see the inside, which there's plenty of dust here. So unexpected that dust would just plume from the box. So I cut these pieces to go on the inside of the box so that the lid can set right on top of it really easily. I have these rabbits on the side. I don't know if you can see those if I bring it up close, but that will allow for this to effectively push these apart. So when I glue it, they'll stay to the perimeter. I'll also put in a couple shims just to kind of press it against the sides so that it has that clamping force and be nice and sturdy for when we put the lid on there finally. just finished this and I think it's gonna be really good. So it did a couple things by using the shaper tape. Number one, I think it gave a more realistic look at that shaper uh, pattern, which I wanted. And then number two, it's gonna really be good for eliminating any tear out, which is great because, you know, that can be a tendency for that. All right, it's finally done. Here is my submission that you've seen the build of to the Shaper Box Challenge. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's not the perfect box, of course. I'm not sure if any box is. And certainly there's some things that maybe I should have done a little differently, but I'm happy with it. It works really well. I love these details. I really think that Shaper Tape kind of design worked out well. Um, it's a good box. The lid comes off nicely and I'm going to be able to store all my stuff in here. So that's pretty great. I'm going to show you a slideshow of just kind of finished images illustrating what it looks like with all the stuff inside it. So you know that it actually is a functional box. That's what I'm most excited about here. I'm great with it. I think this has been um, a really good opportunity for me to push some of my skills and try some things. Um, this is my first time trying a box lid like this, which is exciting. And I think it turned out well. Um, hopefully you can kind of see some of those details there, the angle of the lid, that 10 degree bevel, and then also again, those details of the different shaper tape around it. Again, I'll take some other video and shots of this. I'll put them on my Instagram. It's at Faulkner Makes. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and enjoy making.